Hey everybody, welcome to the Unguided Nations Podcast. I am your host, Richie Tolway. I'm the host, I'm the guest, I'm all there ever was and all there'll ever be. This is my solo podcast. For those of you who don't know who I am, I was a comedian in New York City, trying my hand at stand-up comedy for a few years. I was doing a lot of drinking, a lot of drugging, a lot of uh, dating the wrong people. So I had a big massive breakup, big life upset, realized I was going to turn 30 and I had never seen anything outside of the US and I didn't want to do that. So I sold everything I owned, I packed up everything, left my apartment, left New York City, and I left the United States for the first time. And I wanted to document it, so I didn't want to just take like vacation photos. So I taught myself how to film, I taught myself how to edit video, and I've uh, started a YouTube channel called Unguided Nations. This is kind of a supplement to that. Basically for things, uh, sometimes I want to cuss a little bit more than YouTube uh, allows or likes for advertising reasons and sometimes I want to tell stories and not have to worry about uh, color correcting and clipping it all up into this perfect little neat uh, video or putting on pants. Sometimes I want to tell stories without putting on pants. And so I started this podcast now. Now we're going to do this where I get to tell you uh, stories every week from my travels or what's going on with me, what's going on with my life. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love podcasts. I've had podcasts before. They were always a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you haven't checked out Unguided Nations on YouTube, go check it out. Uh, follow me anywhere. It's at Unguided Nations on Twitter, on Instagram. Go to Facebook, check it out. The Un Unguided Nations page. I post videos there. And then I also, of course, post them to YouTube.com slash Unguided Nations. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Travel vlog type stuff. Information from around the world. Funny type stuff. There are videos that I would want to watch. And that's what I try to make at all times. So I'll try to make this a podcast that I would want to listen to. Uh, what else? What else is going on with me? Uh, right now I'm in Thailand, Bangkok. So I, I've hit about, for the, for you newcomers, for you guys have, that have been following my story, hello, I love you. Let me sum it up for these newcomers and welcome them. Uh, I've hit about, let's see, I left in August. So it's been about five, six months now. I've hit 16 countries, 15, 16 countries, flown all around the, the world. I'm just blowing my money. I'm an idiot. I'm not like a trust fund kid. This is all self-funded. I just saved up a bunch of money and then I'm blowing it all. So right now I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Basically, I was tired of moving around so much. I have a lot of camera gear and I was tired of packing up and unpacking and repacking and blah, blah, blah and losing shit in hotel rooms every other week. So I stationed myself in, ba in Bangkok, Thailand. That's where I'm staying for the next couple of months at least. I'm going to be traveling from here, of course, going to Indonesia, going over to Cambodia, a bunch of different little places, but that's where I'm going to be living. That's where the, some of the stories are going to be taking place. Uh, where I'm staying is kind of far. Uh, it's kind of stupidly far, honestly. If you guys look at a map and the, if you look up Rat Barana, spelled like rat, R-A-T-B-U-R-A-N-A, -A, that's where I'm staying. It's uh, across the river, which is... I don't know. I mean, that's like your friend telling you that they're moving to New York City and then they're like, yeah, I'm going to move into Sheep's Head Bay. And you're just like, dude, that's not New York City. Like you are so not anywhere near the city. So it's a bit unfortunate. I'm only actually here for another week or two, uh, but I kind of, you know, chose it because it's a nice property. It's like very kind of Orwellian and like no one talks to each other. Like the door people just greet you silently. They just get, give you like a nod and the security guards give you a salute as you leave. But that's really it. Nobody talks to each other. Nobody interacts. Nobody's having fun or enjoying their life. We're just like, we, we wake up, we go to work, we go on the treadmill for 35 minutes each. We swim laps in the pool. No one's enjoying the pool. There's an amazing, luxurious pool overlooking the river here. Nobody enjoys it. They swim laps in it, but that's about it. I'm the only one that's like on vacation here that goes out and lays in the sun. Very bizarre. But anyways, one reason why I chose this place is because they have a sauna. And I've been really getting into saunas in my travels. Mostly because I've been on vacation practically for five months and I've been eating like I'm on vacation for five months. So I've been really trying to like lose weight uh, lately. And I'm, I'm an ex-fat kid and I'm kind of, the, kind of currently a fat guy. Uh, so it's like you could tell me you can either go run on the treadmill or you can ride a bike and do like real cardio, or you could just sit in a room and be kind of uncomfortable for a little while. And that's that's where my heart went to. That's where my heart's been the whole last five months. I try to seek out saunas wherever I go. And at this point, I've fallen in love with it. It's, it's therapeutic. You know, I like a good schwitz. I like to sit around and sweat with my boys a little bit. It's been great. But I hit a lot of saunas all across Europe. And Europeans are very... Uh, 
they're way more okay with the human body, I guess. Than, and maybe it's just me. Maybe it's America. I think it's kind of American because we have like giant board shorts. Like we go to the beach and all the dudes are wearing board shorts. We're not, you know, wearing the banana hammocks and the Speedos. So in a lot of the uh, Eastern European saunas, it's just dudes hanging out naked, which is totally fine. I uh, saw a lot of saw a lot of old man dick uh, through my travels. So I had, <laughs> actually had one forgot about this uh, inclusion of polka Romania. All right, I was in inclusion of polka for Halloween. Uh, inclusion of polka is in Transylvania, so that was the whole reason. I was like, oh yeah, let's spend uh, you know travel. Let's go to Transylvania for Halloween and find Dracula. Uh, not very fun. Not very Dracula esque. I went to one castle and it was pretty disappointing. Uh, anyways, Cluj Napoca, very nice place. I stayed on this uh, river, like next to a mall with a gym on the top floor. And I went into the locker room. And in the locker room, there was a, a, a dude naked straddling a bench, right? Straight up just straddling a bench naked, very confidently. You know, I understand if you're going to have the occasional I'm walking from the shower or I'm changing or whatever. You can you can be dick out for that. You can be naked for I feel like there's an acceptable threshold. Acceptable threshold, am I right? No, don't make bad jokes. Okay. There's an acceptable threshold to be naked in the the locker room and then then you you put you put your fucking clothes on. Quit making people stare at your dick. This guy was sitting there on the bench straddling it. Dick and balls resting out eating a sandwich. He had a panini in the locker room and he ate it naked just letting people walk by him first off no eating in the locker room all right you don't bring food into the i mean you can put it in your your locker or whatever protein shakes protein bars it's the only allowable food in the gym you shouldn't be bringing in your mozzarella and tomato panini but he's sitting there eating it. <laughs> he just made eye contact with me and everything man just dick out so I don't know. That kind of confidence is is what you see. Is it confidence, or is he just crazy, or is that just European? And it, you know, they they grow up seeing each other's dicks, and and so that's okay. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. But anyway, you, you're in you're in the sauna all the time. You're seeing a lot of naked dudes, and a lot of naked old guys, and they're they're always like slapping the 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 sweat off of them. They do a lot of like slap, and so it's just like there's all these like, gross noises in saunas because they're like rubbing the sweat off them, but it's just like you know, wet ham on wet ham. Why am I talking about this so long? So I got to the sauna here. I got to the, uh, the property that I'm staying at in Bangkok. It's called the Ivy River Condo. And they have a saunas. And I went in one day and I was like, you know, I've, I've been wearing shorts into the sauna. And, and everywhere it says that they recommend going in naked. Like you're supposed to go in naked or like with very little clothing on. So I've been wearing like swim shorts in every single time. And I'm like, fuck it, man. This is my house now. I'm not at some weird gym. I'm not going to be the crazy guy eating a sandwich when everybody else is clothed. This is where I live now. So I am going to go into the sauna naked. So I went down there, uh, got undressed by the lockers. There's like a whole gym set up on the property here, which is really nice. But I, I strip down, get totally naked. I start making my way over. And for some reason, this locker room was pretty fucking busy at this time because I've lived here now for two and a half weeks. That was the busiest I've ever seen this locker room. They had like five people walking around in it. The, the whole time I've been here, nobody, none whatsoever. But this time, the locker room was packed. There was tons of people there. It wasn't even a weekend. So I start walking over and butt naked. I'm holding my towel just kind of dangling it in front, you know, like a Tarzan, uh, like a Tarzan uh, flap, just just covering up, but you know, letting people know, like, hey, I'm 95% uncovered, and soon you, that last five percent is gonna come off. So I go over there, I walk to the sauna, and I look in, and I don't see anybody. Uh, I, I I leave my towel outside, I hang it on the little hook step into the sauna and I turn and there was a much larger sauna than I thought. And there are four men just sitting there staring at me, all wearing clothes. Everybody there was wearing American style board shorts, fully covered up, politely nodding at me 
and I, I still had my hand over my boys at that point, but I've never felt so alone in that moment, you know, because like, I think I just I found out I found out hard stop full stop that is where my confidence ends I will be the fattest guy in the sauna I'll be the 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 ugliest guy I'll be the smallest dick guy in the sauna but I will not be the only naked guy in the sauna that's I'm not gonna for I immediately started backpedaling you know at first I was like this is my home I live here now and then I'm like this is their home I'm only here for a month you know I can't really just be showing my dick to them it was horrendous it was horrifying so and i don't know what you guys would have done but i walked right out i just left and i went and put pants on and uh i could put my swim swim trunks on i i, I walked man i shouldn't have walked out i mean i should have at least just sat there i don't know i don't know how to handle that scenario but either way the door was still open i didn't want to fully commit to this bit anymore and so I left and I, I, I went and put my shorts on. I went back in and I didn't make eye contact with any of them. I just, you know, like a, when a dog is in trouble and you're yelling at it and it, it won't look to the side. It just looks straight forward, even though, you know, it knows you're there. That's what I was doing the whole time. I couldn't look these men in the eyes after having uh, made such a faux pas. And I've never seen a naked man in that sauna ever since. So apparently in Asia, Eastern European rules do not apply don't show your wiener to a bunch of Asian dudes. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's is that confidence? Is that comfort? Is it is that is that just culture? I, I have no idea. But uh I just don't have the confidence of a guy eating a sandwich dick out. That's like straight up porn star confidence. That's like that's like you've never thought you you, you ever realize that uh receiving oral sex is just like it requires some confidence if you think about what you look like from that person's perspective. I want like you have to make sure that that person's pretty fucking into you because they had to look up at you. Go turn on your camera, turn on your selfie camera on your phone right now, like down in your lap and look down at what you look like. Someone had to have their their mouth all over your genitalia and look up and see that and keep going. And that is true love right there. No, just me, just me that thinks about this stuff. I don't know. Do it. Take a picture of yourself. Post it on Instagram. Tag me in it. That's what you look like when you're getting ahead. It's disgusting. What are we talking about here? Confidence is just hard to grasp, I guess. Like, I've been trying to to understand myself a little bit better. Um, so I'm in a program. I mean, like I said, I got sober. Maybe I didn't say it. Who knows? I've recorded this podcast four different times now because I keep having audio mistakes and I don't know what I'm doing yet. But I got sober nine months ago. I'm in a program. It is an unnamed program because they don't want to be named. It's the program that everybody goes to when they used to drink, but they don't drink anymore. And I haven't been very active in it ever since I left New York. I've been kind of going solo, which it has not been super fun and super successful. But part of this program was like, facing your depression facing you know all this shit and and part of it also is meditation so I, while i haven't been going to meetings a whole lot over the last five months i've been really getting into meditation a lot which has been great it's just trying to like find yourself it's trying to like tear yourself down but also build yourself up it's very confusing but i've been doing a lot of meditation while i've been alone that's which is kind of bizarre also when you're alone traveling the world and then you're like you know what i need some alone time i need some alone time for me let me put some headphones in and listen to somebody else talk for a little bit but that's what happened uh what i what i did find though is i like here's the thing i do mindfulness meditation i have uh, there's a, a youtube channel all right i fuck with youtube way more than i fuck with any other app or whatever else because you download those apps where it's like i figure it was calm i think like that something like that but on calm like someone's just there at their day job, you know, that's that's some lady who's getting paid like nine dollars an hour to 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 do guided meditation versus a YouTube channel. That's somebody who's like trying to make a career out of that. That's like they have to provide the quality content up front in order to gain the subscribers. So I feel like people are just trying harder on YouTube 
Either way, so I go to this channel called The Mindful Movement. Uh, this woman, Sarah Raymond, she's amazing. Her voice is angelic. She always puts me down. And it's great. And I say put, I, I say she puts me down because I I realized like guided meditation is is just hypnosis. It's just like a more digestible form of hypnosis. If you really like research how hypnotism started and what is really happening, like I started meditating uh like seven or eight months ago before I left the US and I found all this shit and I started listening to it. But there were times where I was like, I'm pretty sure I went under like I was gone. I thought I was falling asleep at first. At first I thought I was just sleeping. I was just like she would put me down three minutes in and I'd be gone. But then I realized she's waking me up every single time. I'd be gone for however long she wanted me to be gone for. 12 minutes. If it was a 40 minute video, I'd be gone for 34 minutes. But that last three minutes, she pulls you back out. She says, okay, you're going to start, you know, acknowledging the surface below you, deepen your breath, blah, blah, blah. And I'd wake back up. And so I'm like, there's something to this. All right. This isn't just a meditation. This is straight up hypnosis with like these positive affirmations in the middle. Uh, it's been great. I mean, I, I, I love doing it. It's like a nice little nap. And it really like it puts you into REM sleep guided meditation slash hypnosis they've found is basically putting your body into that same kind of hypnosis, uh, hypnotic state where you are uh, sleep, you go through sleep paralysis, you're almost in like REM sleep stage, the deep, really restorative stage. And that's why you're so open to suggestion. So I've been doing that like fucking every day I do a mindful meditation. And then at night, I found these two guys uh, that do sleep hypnosis. And they also just put me out. But Again, they don't have the waking up part of it until eight hours later. It's like an eight hour long video, which is crazy. But I've been doing a lot of that. And then then you kind of get into the really deep shit. Once you fully acknowledge that this is hypnosis, you can start looking into like astral projections and you start looking into past life regressions and shit like that. So I haven't done a lot of those crazy ones just because I've been like, just kind of searching for ones that I can use on the daily basis. Oh my God. Oh my God. I tried an alpha. <laughs> I tried, I found this one. It was like alpha male meditation set to Viking drums. And it was the most insane shit I've ever heard. It started out with like those low war drums, those bait, like boom, boom. And then guys, oh, oh, like in the background, and this uh, this guy comes on and he's like, you're about to he, he talks in that like if you don't care about uh, if you're just going to do like the droney type voice. It was insane. But he was like he, he, he got me he, like halfway down. He didn't get me fully into sleep because it sounded he sounded so stupid that I couldn't actually go and be put down into like the restorative state. But I was like half in. And that's the thing is like you always commit. If you, if you listen to a 35 minute recording, then just commit. You'd be like, hey, I'm going to take some time for myself, lay down, get under the blankets, close my eyes for 35 minutes. Take the pause either way throughout your day. Uh, even if you don't technically go down, you still get to listen to the affirmations. It still feels pretty good. So I'm listening to those affirmations. And most of them are like, I am a beam of sunshine. I am right where I need to be in life. Like that's the general shit. I have the power to take on any problem. Yada yada. That this guy. Men fear my large cock. Women want to drip my balls into their mouth. Animals fear me. Like animals fear me. This guy's fucking affirmations is that dogs are afraid of him. Why would you want that? Calm. That's not alpha male. That's that's insanity. And this guy was then then two guys came in and they did that bullshit where one's talking in the right ear and one's talking in the left ear. And it was just two dudes like two Fabio sounding dudes trying to talk like like a Batman villain or something about their throbbing hard dicks and and how everybody like just basically women want you and men fear you and you could just beat the shit out of anybody you want walking down the street just the craziest uh shit you can really this is a, a rabbit hole that you can really get deep into but i did one recently i haven't fucked with a lot of the astral projections or the uh past life regressions there's a lot of that kind of crazy shit out there and and i i'll preface this with i i, I know i know it's not 
I don't think it's real, at least. But you're in a very suggestive state, and it's crazy. So about three days ago, I did a past life regression meditation. It was like midday, like 3 p.m. or whatever. I did a past life regression. And uh, it was a new person. It wasn't like my usual people that I listened to. So she puts me under. And I could feel myself maybe being like three quarters of the way under. Uh, I don't know how to fully explain it. But like when I'm 100% under, I know that I'm there. I know that I could wake up at any moment. But I'm like, I really don't want to. It doesn't mean I'm fully asleep. Because I have fallen asleep during this shit where I don't remember anything that they said whatsoever uh, versus like being under where you really do like you remember it as a dream state almost. Um, so this she had me like three quarters away under. I was like a little more cognizant of the uh, of the physical realm than I wanted than I want to usually be. But she puts me under. She goes, uh, you're going to see someone in your past life who was very important to you. And immediately I saw this guy, I saw a very well-dressed man in a tan suit and in like an old school kitchen. Uh, she goes, immediately you will know what year it is. In my head, boom, 1958. I knew it was 1958. She's like, you, and you know exactly who this important person is. It was my father, Robert. Not my real father, but like in, you know, in this world, that was my father, Robert. He was a well-dressed Italian dude uh, in 1958. Standing there in the kitchen, we had like the retro fridge and everything, you know, and it was like, this is, um, this is like, it has that yellow, like sepia overtone because it's like an old photograph almost that I'm looking at. Um, it's like a, a, like a little vignette. There's no real movement. It's just him existing in the kitchen. And I felt such deep love and respect and like mutual respect. And I was like, yes, this is my father. And we fucking love each other. Like he he is so proud to have me as his son. And I'm so proud to have him as my dad. This well-dressed man in a tan suit. No idea. But so, yeah. And then I immediately miss him. Like that's the only thing I can think is that, oh, I do remember this guy. I do remember having this perfect father that I loved so much and I miss him so much and I was missing Robert and then I felt myself bawling in real in real life uh, and that kind of helped keep me not fully into this thing because I had tears I was I mean I can feel myself physically you know my chest is heaving I'm I'm bawling I am crying tears are streaming down my face and uh actually some even some light is getting in my eyes cuz when I'm you know blinking the tears away it's kind of like shining in so I was like still only 3 quarters down but I man I just the most intense emotions missing this man and then it shows uh it it it's like it's going to be another important person in your life or you know someone that that you miss or something like that and I saw this woman, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, like strawberry blonde hair, very uh, like, I don't know, petite face, like very soft features on her face. She's wearing like a light blue dress out in the woods. Oh, it, oh, and then she's like, you know exactly where you are. I was in uh, I was in East Brook, like not East Brooklyn, uh, Long Island. I was like in, in Long Island in New York in 1958. And this woman uh, was was the love of my life. She Her name was Julie. And. Uh, she was just kind of, again, like another vignette, just kind of like looking out and like the, you could, the wind was kind of like moving the trees behind her. It was fall. It was beautiful. And, and she died in a car accident. That's for like, I knew that I knew that she died way too young, possibly before we got married even, uh, <laughs> I could hear like kids playing. And I don't know if those were the kids we were supposed to have or whatever, but I just knew that I missed my father and he was gone and I was reminiscing about my ex-wife or ex-fiance that died prematurely in a car accident. And then she's like, you're going to go to one of the uh, one of the most important days of your life. And it was like me retiring from a large company that I had created. I had, you know, it was just like some either a factory or like I was just the office guy. I'd sit up in the CEO's office and deal with papers all day. And I didn't fucking care about anything because I lost the person. I lost the one like woman for me. I had like stayed alone. I was just like a lonely drunk man that worked all day in his office 
but he built this massive company and he was well respected and blah 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 and i remember you know like them cheering me on and being like eh. i think my name was dan actually i think my i think i finally gave myself the name dan in there um but yeah everybody was like ah oh, you did it you're you know you're retiring from your company that you created you're an amazing man and it was infinite sadness just total truly infinite uh emptiness in my life it was so insane. I literally cried. I was crying and bawling for 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. I just laid in my in my apartment crying, listening to this thing. And and I swear to God, there's nothing that's like leading. There's no leading uh details. There, she's not, you know, the, the woman that's that's talking me through all of this, it's very loose. And most of it, she's just silent through it. And she's just explaining that you're going to feel a certain thing, you know, like she runs through a couple scenarios, but here's the thing towards the end, I realized that she was always given, she, she's like, you know, you'll know exactly when it is. It could be from recent history. It could be from ancient history. So I'm realizing as I'm coming out of this shit and, uh, I could have been anything, man. Why did my, I'm, my brain could have picked anything i could have been a fucking zulu warrior i could have been in space god damn it i could have been joan of arc i could have been a roman soldier like what the fuck ever i could have done anything it could have been a cowboy and instead what it did is it put me as a mild-mannered ceo of a company in long island new york in 1958 who lost everything he loved and fucking i had depression even in my my past life regression that I, my dream that I had, I got to dream and just be sad. It was so fucked up. It was such a weird thing. You're I'm like, and she even said, she was like, maybe there's something that you can take away from this, you know, into your current life, a lesson or whatever. It's just like, I couldn't control. I knew that I couldn't control it. I knew that I blamed myself for my uh, wife's premature death. And maybe I had to let that shit go. I mean, but, that is not the fucking alternate reality that anybody imagines. It's like that. There's a Rick and Morty episode where where Morty goes through an entire life, and you know, in like three minutes. Of course, people are like watching him play a video game. And he goes through an entire life, and he wakes up. He's like, you know, where's my wife? Like he freaks out and shit. And that's exactly how it was. I just, I, I fucking, I miss these people, and I have literally been going through the bereavement process. Like, I'm going through the stages of grief over the last few days. It's just like, I don't know if they really did exist. I missed them. I, it's so fucking crazy. It's so crazy that I had a choice to do anything. And what my brain went to was like, hey, let's create people that you're going to miss a lot. Let's make you say, I don't, I, I can't explain it. I can't explain missing somebody and knowing that they never even existed almost like almost for sure never existed i can't i guess i you know like i've i don't know i was it was a trip you know it was it was a weird trip and i don't know reality like i don't i don't miss drinking i don't miss cocaine i don't miss any of the other drugs ever but i did mushrooms once in my entire life and i miss mushrooms i do miss uh the altering of re that one alteration of reality is why I still do meditation and all that stuff because it's like crazy how you can just alternate or alternate um, how you can just completely change your reality around you. Like, because there were times when I was drinking and doing drugs that I would convince myself that I was like a paranoid schizophrenic, you know, and I, I totally get the homeless people like just screaming sometimes because you can go over that edge. But that's not how mushrooms are. That's not how the meditation is. It's just existing on a whole nother plane. I don't mean to sound all like hippy dippy and be like, yeah, dude, there's a little crazy stuff out there. But there's fucking some there's something inside your head that you can unlock that is just nuts. Uh, and I didn't trip like majorly, but I did do mushrooms once. And that was it, 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 that's what it was like. It was just a whole new world. And I do miss that. Like there's a part of me where I'm like, are shrooms really a drug? Like, can you do that and still call yourself sober? I mean, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to, I'm still enjoying being like a, a, a sober, normal person, but I don't know. <sighs> trying to get better. Just trying to be a better person. Uh, one of the reasons I got sober is also because I have depression and I, I'm not going to make it like about this. I don't know. I've touched on depression in some of my videos, um, but 
my life doesn't revolve around it. I try not to let it revolve around it. Uh, when I left the States, though, I was on I was on Wellbutrin. I was on medication for depression. And that was the first time in my life that I had really engaged in therapy um, was when I got sober. And I got sober in order to be able to take Wellbutrin. Uh, and it was it was good, but I'm I'm a bad person in the sense that I will very quickly call myself healed. You know, like I'll start a diet and I'll, it'll be successful for one week. And I'm like, well, I'm fixed now and I don't have to address the fact that I eat like shit all the rest of my life. You know, I'll, I'll quickly just be like, well, I'm not an alcoholic anymore. I can go put myself in the most dangerous situations. Uh, let me go travel the world alone for six months or OK, well, I guess I had a good day in Barcelona so I can stop taking my medications now. And that's exactly what happened. I got to Barcelona, Spain, maybe a month into my travels. I went to Barcelona, Spain, and that's when I was running out of my uh, prescription medication. So I was like, you know, just wean yourself off and, and go off of it. But, you know, the shit crept back. I do have uh, I do have depression. So crept back. The cool thing about Thailand is that their pharmacies are like pretty fucking loose. Like you don't need prescriptions for a lot of shit. And prescriptions are easy to get anyways. It's not like the nightmare healthcare system that is the U.S., um, or even the European Union, really, it was going to be tough to get my drugs there as well. So I was able to just like load up on months worth of Wellbutrin when I got here. And I've been taking it now. I've been on it for a couple of weeks. And I was, uh, <laughs> it was just a couple of days ago. Uh, it was pretty late in the day. I usually take it around noon. And I was like, fuck, I don't know if I took my pill today. And I was leaving for the day. And I didn't, that's the thing with Wellbutrin, there's no like, cool psychoactive properties there's no uh factor for abuse you can't it's not valium or uh what's that other one for anti-anxiety that everybody xanax you know there's just there's no fun to wellbutrin it's just takes a long time you have to take it for like an entire month before it supposedly takes effect uh and it just kind of slowly builds up in your system so there's literally no risk to take there's no reward to take too much and there's a hundred percent risk like you can you can have seizures like i was reading up because i'm like i don't know if i took my medicine or not i tried to like count out the pills and figure it all out but i knew i had a few left over from my previous dose that i stopped taking there was no way to like mathematically equate it but i was like i'm pretty sure i didn't take it but i was reading up and it's like if you double your dose of wellbutrin or if you overdose on wellbutrin it's basically just a huge risk of having seizures and i was like well that's fucking horrifying but i was pretty sure so i took a pill and like it, i don't know what right when i took the pill my brain was like oh yeah that was for sure the second pill we took today <laughs> i was like fuck we'll bring on the seizures but that made me start researching seizures and uh they don't sound that bad like I always equated seizures with heart attack and all those like like you can die from all you people die from heart attacks all the time. You have a heart attack and you just you're gone. And like same thing with like brain hemorrhages and all that kind of shit. But seizures, people don't die from seizures. They die from like falling. They die from like falling and breaking their face or uh, you fall into traffic or you have a seizure while you're on the road and you like crash your car. But very rarely, or I guess you could choke in your vomit too. That was kind of a, you could choke on your vomit because you, you know, you just lose control. What it was described as though was an electrical storm in your brain, which is like, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm nine months sober. I'm kind of like, bring on that electrical storm, baby. Maybe I'll get to see Robert and Julie again if I have a seizure. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, let me know. Have you ever, have you ever had a seizure? Am I? I mean, this may be wildly insensitive. I know that nobody looks forward. To, the people that do suffer from seizures, they don't look forward to having a seizure. I understand that. I understand it's. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of it. I just think the description of a fire or like an electrical storm in your brain, because some of them can be mini too. Like you just kind of, you know, you have fucked up speech for a little bit or. Or you're like, you, you lose a little bit of control of your body. They don't always have to be like massive convulsions. So I'm like, you know, if I start, you know, shit starts flashing around inside of my brain, not the worst thing in the world. Could could uh, could be interesting. And again, maybe I get to see my beautiful wife who died in a car accident 
prematurely. R.I.P. Julie and Robert. <sighs> what a sad fucking story. I still miss those people. Good people. Good people that I made up just to miss immediately. Oh, God. Do it. Uh, do it, though. Look it up. I highly recommend it. I think that's going to be it for this episode, but I highly recommend you guys get into, uh, you know, I think meditation is just in the realm of therapy and all that other shit where it's, it can probably benefit most people. If nothing more, just lying down in the middle of the day and taking a nap for a half hour will probably do you a lot of good. But if you really want to get into some crazy shit, look up astral projection, look up look up past life regressions on YouTube and and, and check out some of those things. And if you see my father, Robert, in uh, in Long Island, tell him I'm sorry, and I hope he's proud of me. That was it. That's it for this episode. This is the uh, inaugural. Is that is that the right word? This is the inaugural episode of the Unguided Nations podcast. I don't know if it's going to be ever called anything other than the Unguided Nations podcast. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you uh, keep coming back. Subscribe on iTunes if you like it. You leave it a review. I know that always helps. I'm so new to this whole podcasting realm. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I said, I recorded this thing three fucking times just because I kept running into audio issues or weird, uh, I don't know, recording shit. So we'll see if I can even get this out into the world. But if I do... Give it a, a, a subscribe. Do you subscribe to podcasts? Yeah, you subscribe on iTunes. Give it a positive review. You know, tag me. Let me know. You can always also just uh, get at me. DM me at Unguided Nations. That's U-N-G-U-I-D-E-D Nations on Instagram. DM me there. DM me on Twitter. Uh, but really, YouTube is where it's at. That's where I post all of my videos. You can also email me, uh, unguidednations at gmail.com. If you do some crazy, uh, crazy past life regressions, let me know. I want to hear the stories. Maybe we'll talk about it again later on. Either way, I appreciate you guys listening to the Unguided Nations podcast. Go check it out on YouTube. If you haven't ever uh, seen the videos, I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Richie Tolley with Unguided Nations, and I will see you next week on another episode.